A report published in the journal Nature Human Behavior on October 25, 2021, revealed the discovery of 478 ceremonial complexes in the Mexican states of Tabasco and Veracruz, which are thought to have been of cosmic importance to Mesoamerican civilizations over 3,000 years ago. The ceremonial complexes can't be seen with the human eye, but can be detected with LIDAR scanning technology. LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging, is a remote sensing technology for measuring distances. It does this by emitting a laser at a target and analyzing the light that is reflected with sensors. LIDAR uses ultraviolet, visible, or near-infrared light to image objects and can be used with a wide range of targets including non-metallic objects, rocks, rain, chemical compounds, aerosols, clouds, and even molecules. Originating around 2000 BC, the Maya civilization thrived in Central America for over 2,000 years reaching its height between 250 to 900 AD. The Olmecs, meanwhile, were another Mesoamerican civilization who occupied the land earlier. But mainstream academia maintains that the Olmec civilization originated circa 1500 BC. Of course, this makes very little sense, and the archive believes the Olmecs first appeared around 3000 BC. Interestingly, despite the difference between when the Maya and Olmec structures were built, they share a similar design trait, with a focus on rectangular plazas flanked by platforms along the edges. University of Arizona archaeologist Takeshi Inamata, who led the study, said LIDAR spotted a large and previously unknown rectangular earthen ceremonial space at San Lorenzo. It measures about 3,300 feet by 900 feet, or 1,000 meters by 275 meters, with 20 platforms around the edges slightly elevated above it. Its purpose remains unclear, but it may have been a plaza where large numbers of people gathered for some type of ceremonies, while the platforms surrounding the plaza may have had residences, Inamata said. Many of the hundreds of ceremonial complexes identified in the study share common layouts like the one at San Lorenzo. Many appear to have been built with orientations aligned with the direction of sunrise on specific key ceremonial dates. These centers were probably the earliest material expressions of basic concepts of Mesoamerican calendars, Inomato explained, noting that such calendars were based on a unit of 20 days matching the number of platforms around the San Lorenzo Ceremonial Center. An even larger ceremonial center described by Inomata and his colleagues last year was found at a site in the Maya region in Tabasco near the Guatemalan border. A Guada Phoenix is a 3,000-year-old Mayan temple that was built between 800 B.C. and 1,000 B.C. It's the ancient Maya civilization's oldest and largest monument. The site is 4,600 feet long and up to 50 feet high, making it larger than the Mayan pyramids and palaces of later periods, according to the team behind the discovery. The researchers' work suggests that San Lorenzo served as a template for the later constructions, including a Guada Phoenix. Quote, people always thought San Lorenzo was very unique and different from what came later in the terms of site arrangement. But now we show that San Lorenzo is very similar to a Guada Phoenix. It has a rectangular plaza flanked by edge platforms. This tells us that San Lorenzo is very important for the beginning of some of these ideas that were later used by the Maya, end quote. Researchers think that the sites were used in ritual gatherings and, based on the way they are facing, many seem to be aligned with the sunrise of a certain date. Quote, there are lots of exceptions, for example, not every site has enough space to place the rectangular form in a desired direction, but when they can, they seem to have chosen certain dates. This means they were representing cosmological ideas through these ceremonial spaces, end quote. One theory is that the certain date in question was the Zenith Passage Day, a day in which the sun passes directly overhead meaning no person or object cast any shadow for a while. The date of the Zenith Passage Day depends on one's location. The number 20 appears to keep showing up in the constructions as well, 
which is thought to be a significant figure in Mesoamerican calendars. Researchers still wonder what the social organization of the people who built the complexes looked like. San Lorenzo possibly had rulers, which is suggested by sculptures, but Aguada Phoenix didn't, and was likely an egalitarian society. Quote, we think that people were still somehow mobile because they had just begun to use ceramics and lived in ephemeral structures on the ground level. People were in transition to more settled life ways, and many of those areas probably didn't have much organization, but still they could make this kind of very well-organized center. End quote. There's a long-standing debate over whether the Olmec civilization led to the development of the Maya civilization or if the Maya developed independently. According to Takeshi Inamata and his team, the new finding transforms previous understanding of Mesoamerican civilization origins and the relationship between the Olmec and the Maya people. As has been the case with countless archaeological discoveries in recent decades, this latest revelation about the Olmecs in Mesoamerica is yet another vindication of the ancient astronaut hypothesis. Our regular viewers are likely well aware that Zachariah Sitchin posited the correct timeline for the Olmec civilization decades ago in his book The Lost Realms, published in 1990. In Sitchin's own words, quote, if an astronaut were ever to corroborate an aspect of my writings, I would have expected it to be in regard to planetary matters. Surprisingly, such a corroboration concerns, of all things, the Olmecs of ancient Mexico. The unexpected corroboration is tucked away in the recently published book, A Leap of Faith, by the Mercury 7 astronaut Gordon Cooper. Readers of my books know by now that beginning with the discovery of a colossal stone head in 1869, an advanced civilization that preceded the Mayas and Aztecs of Mexico came to light. Its leaders and bearers were unmistakably black Africans. They were arbitrarily named by archaeologists Olmecs, and their embarrassing enigma of who they were and how they had come across the ocean and why was compounded by the timing of their arrival in the New World. Once it was conceded, very grudgingly, that the Olmecs did indeed represent the earliest or even mother civilization of Mesoamerica, the date of their arrival was at first set at about 250 BC, then about 500 BC, then farther back and back until 1500 BC was acknowledged. But I have argued for a date twice as old. My conclusion that the Olmec presence in the New World went back at least 5,000 years to circa 3000 BC was reached by many paths. The first one was an attempt to identify the great god of Mesoamerica, the winged serpent, Quetzalcoatl to the Aztecs, Kuklakan to the Mayas and the significance of his promise to return to those lands on the first day of a 52-year cycle. The peoples of Mesoamerica employed, in addition to a practical calendar of 365 days called the Hob, also a sacred calendar called Zulkin of 260 days. The two cyclical calendars were conceived as two wheels with meshing teeth that turned and returned to the same spot once in 52 years, and 52 was the sacred number of the winged serpent god. Since 52 was also the secret number of the god known to the Egyptians as Thoth, since Thoth as Quetzalcoatl was the god of science and the calendar, and since Thoth was exiled from Egypt circa 3100 BC, I have suggested that it was he who took a group of his African followers to a new land bringing the Olmecs to Mesoamerica. Accordingly, I said, Olmec presence goes back to at least 3000 BC, a date twice as old as that conceded by established archaeologists. In addition to the Hob and the Zulkin, there was in Mesoamerica a third calendar used to inscribe dates on monuments. Giving the name the Long Count, it was not cyclical as the other two, but linear, a continuous one 
counting the number of days that had passed since the counting began on a mysterious day one. By means of glyphs denoting groups of days, 1, 20, 360, 7200, or even 144,000, and dots and bars giving the number for each group glyph, monuments were dated by saying, a total of so many days from day one have passed when this monument was erected. But what was that day one? When did it occur? And what was its significance? It has been established beyond doubt that this long count calendar was the original Olmec calendar, and it is now generally agreed that day one was equivalent to August 13, 3113 B.C. But what does that date signify? As far as I know, the only plausible answer was provided by me. It was the date of Thoth or Quetzalcoatl's arrival with his followers in Mesoamerica. All official publications continue, however, to remain at 1250 BC to 1500 BC at most as the date of the start of the Olmec presence. Sitchin explains, quote, Imagine my pleasant surprise to come across an eyewitness report by the astronaut Gordon Cooper in Chapter 11 of his book, A Leap of Faith. During my final years with NASA, he writes, I became involved in a different kind of adventure, undersea treasure hunting in Mexico. One day, accompanied by a National Geographic photographer, they landed in a small plane on an island in the Gulf of Mexico. Local residents pointed out to them pyramid-shaped mounds where they found ruins, artifacts, and bones. On examination back in Texas, the artifacts were determined to be 5,000 years old. When we learned of the age of the artifacts, Cooper writes, we realized that what we'd found had nothing to do with 17th century Spain. I contacted the Mexican government and was put in touch with the head of the National Archaeological Department, Pablo Bush Romero. Together with Mexican archaeologists, the two went back to the site. After some excavating, Cooper writes, The age of the ruins was confirmed, 3000 B.C. Compared with other advanced civilizations, relatively little was known about this one called the Olmec. Engineers, farmers, artisans, and traders, the Olmecs had a remarkable civilization, but it is still not known where they originated. Among the findings that intrigue me most, celestial navigation symbols and formulas that, when translated, turned out to be mathematical formulas used to this day for navigation and accurate drawings of constellations, some of which would not be officially discovered until the age of modern telescopes. This left me wondering, why have celestial navigation signs if they weren't navigating celestially? And if someone had helped the Olmecs with this knowledge, from whom did they get it? My readers, of course, know the answers. The outstanding museum on the Olmec civilization in Jalapa, in the Veracruz province of Mexico, included, when it was built, a wall panel showing the extent and dates of Mexico's various cultures. On my first visit there, I could hardly believe my eyes. The first, earliest civilization, that of the Olmecs, was shown as begun circa 3000 B.C. I urged the members of my group to take pictures of me pointing to the date. Finally, the date claimed by me has been officially accepted. On a second visit, however, the Olmec column starting at 3000 BC was gone, and the official museum catalog reviewing the Olmec civilization reverted to 1500 BC. But now comes the astronaut Gordon Cooper and what he was told by the chief Mexican archaeologist, 3000 B.C. And thus, when all was said and done, I stand vindicated. Mm -hmm.